Now, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states are seeking to diversify their economies away from oil and gas, for example, by investing in sport and tourism. But they're not the only economies in the region seeking to diversify. The East African state of Djibouti's economy depends heavily on a modern port complex adjacent to some of the world's busiest shipping lanes and which handles many goods that ultimately end up in neighbouring Ethiopia. Well, Djibouti now hopes to become a leader in other fields, including telecoms, finance and tourism. I've been speaking with Slim Ferriani, the chief executive of the Djibouti Sovereign Fund about the country's plans. If you look at the global map of subsea cables, uh, you will see that uh, there are nine, nine subsea cables landing in Djibouti, uh, besides Djibouti, which is in the middle of between Europe and Asia. Now you've got Singapore in a league of its own with over 20 um, subsea cables. You've got Marseille in the Mediterranean with about uh, 15 or so cables. And in the middle of that, you've got, um, you've got Djibouti with nine subsea cables. And that is really a key asset that we need to monetize as a country to be a, a global hub for, uh, or at least a continental hub, for the digital economy, in particular data centers. In the recent past, away from the economy, you've hosted both US and Chinese military bases. How do you maintain equidistance between the two? Uh, I think this goes back to uh, leadership and management. Uh, if you don't go forward, you go backwards. And I say this, whether it's for a country or an institution, I've invested about 100 countries. I've seen a lot of uh, political systems. I've seen a lot of leaders. And I think Djibouti um, has that uh, special leader, uh, the president uh, of Djibouti, Ismail Omar Gile, and he's managed yeah, to keep the stability in what is far from being a very stable region or continent for that sake. And uh, so that's political stability and political will, but the genius also of working out to have French military base uh, for historical reasons, the American, biggest uh, American military base in Africa, and the Chinese, but also not just that. You have the Japanese military base, you have many other European military bases, and, uh, and that's leadership who managed to get them all to be in there because of strategic location. But wh why are they all in Djibouti? Because it's the most stable country. They want to be in a stable country, and then that helps them also work on the trade. At the end, it's about the economy. Djibouti's port, port complex is renowned as being one of the best and most modern in the world, but it was built with Chinese money. Does that give China leverage over the country in the way that it has in other places such as Sri Lanka? That's very interesting. Um, I believe this is part of the great uh, story for Djibouti and uh, many other countries, it's closing the gap between perception and reality. The perception might be that the post infrastructure of Djibouti has been built by the Chinese, but the reality is not. It's not at all. Uh, the the uh, Djibouti uh, ports, world-class ports infrastructure, uh, world-renowned, has not been but built by the Chinese, uh, maybe a bit recently, but most of it has been built by Djibouti itself with international players who came in and, and, and built it from not very much over the last two decades. It's work in progress. I mean, today we have a handful of deep sea ports, world class, so not just one, but two, a handful. And they've been built by Djibouti with international partners. Uh, some of it, yes, with the uh, know-how of the Chinese, but not the money of the Chinese for that sake. So international capital. And, uh, and therefore, I think that's the answer to, you, to your question as, as far as um, maybe how much of an influence may China has on the, uh, on the ports of Djibouti. Not that much. Still to come here on Business Live, we'll have